The prospect of painting epic scale stuff at competition quality is absolutely bonkers to me. Quality and smoothness and refinement of it was just insane. Where does it stop? Absolutely mental. Like I, I just That's like, wild. I didn't know that at all. That's someone who went, I've got this pile of shame. I need to just sort <laughs> it out. <laughs> if you're a long-term listener of the podcast, you'll know how important it is to have the right tools to aid you in your painting. And if there's one piece of equipment that I could never live without, it's my Onyx lamp from Native Lighting. It doesn't matter what brush or paints you have if you can't see what you're doing in the first place. The Onyx is the perfect lamp for miniature painting because it's super bright, 2200 lumen LEDs cast soft and diffused light on your models without any harsh shadows. And its daylight balanced color temperature of 6500K gives you the confidence that the colors you are painting are accurate. As someone with a very small hobby desk, by far my favorite feature though is its articulating arm, which clamps to the side of your desk, maximizing your workspace. It's also super adjustable so you can sit comfortably in the perfect painting position without sacrifice. It also folds up into a compact shape, which is great if you like to travel to paint with your friends. To upgrade your setup and order yours now, head to siegestudios.co.uk forward slash shop or head to the link in this episode's description. Hello everyone and welcome to Paint Perspective episode 71. James has returned from one of the biggest miniature events in all of Europe and of course, golden demon. We're going to get into all of that and more in this episode. Uh, but first, another little thing in your universe, James. It's all about you this week. I, I, I just want to caveat, <laughs> I did not schedule this or uh, re request any of the things. The, the stars have just aligned, unfortunately. So. Uh, Warhammer Community, done a whole article on your Blood Angels. Yeah, I think um, that was probably the childhood dream come full circle realization uh i'm still lost for words on it to be perfectly honest i got i got very very kindly asked by um by the community uh if i'd like to talk about blood angels and boy do i like to talk about blood angels james so, was like uh, no you shouldn't yeah. really i nearly yeah. replied saying he's not interested so. <laughs> <laughs> nearly yeah knowing um, james yeah probably yeah. not I, I, i'll say the aggro he talks about them too much so he's, I, not, he's not up for it i snapped at the chance like a piranha yeah, I uh, I very 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 much wanted to do it. Um, yeah, so it was really really uh, sort of not super kind to to be asked to do that. And um, and yeah, so I, I think it was quite convenient the timing really because I think somebody mentioned in one of the comments about never not seeing any of my firstborn blood angels, and then conveniently oh yeah, we spoke about that a few weeks Warcom ago. Didn't we? Came yeah. along and provided an answer without me yeah. needing to, so it was quite good. I think the yeah. the, the, the James's firstborn blood angel army just became a bit of a myth. Yeah, it was yeah. like we spoke about it so much. There was never any pictures. You'd be forgiven for thinking that it didn't exist. But it there does. you go, full full Warhammer community. Art it does. Community. I think one of the most nostalgic things for me was actually getting it all out to have it photographed for the article. Um, I haven't taken some of those models out of the case in probably about three or four years. But they were some dusty cases, Joe. Yeah, yeah. Tell you. the models were not dusty. The cases were. Yeah, I, I think. The models. Um, do you know what one of my most surprising things of that? Because I, I caught a glimpse of that coming all together. Um, when George was setting them up and stuff like that. Number one, I was quite surprised. Foam cases. I know, yeah. From, from James. That's, yeah. that's how old they are. I know, he hadn't yeah. realised he hated them yet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's a bit of an ick. Yeah, it's a bit of an ick, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so that, that brought you down in my estimation because I thought, oh, you know, we're better than that. We've, we've spoken about that. No, I actually, I use foam cases, so I'm, I don't know what I'm talking about. But the uh, the other thing was, the funniest part about that was that George kind of had like what he thought was the whole army. I don't know if you remember this. What he remember. thought was the whole army on the table. And he was like, oh, is that all it is kind of thing? And then we were kind of rummaging around and we were like, oh, no, it's that box, that box. It's in here as well. Actually, oh, there's a couple of dreadnoughts in here. It was like yeah, it was another like two times. There was a moment was where out. I was like, we've been talking about this, this prophesized like Blood Angels Army for so long. And then I get it on the table and it was like 30 models. I was like, is that it? Yeah, and then James was like, "Oh no, no, no!" It gets like two more suitcases <laughs> on the table. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, no. So getting it all out was um, was really nice actually, because I, as I said, I haven't seen some of those models in quite some time, uh, and it actually made me realise that I've painted a lot more than I remembered, which I think was quite good. I think you, if you often do that, you if, if, when you paint armies and stuff, they go back in the case or storage or whatever, and then you you kind of forget how much you actually done of it yeah, or yeah. put into it so was that so that was a mixture of like competition entries you've done over the years it was a tournament army yeah there was your heresy army as well yeah so there's the heresy army um there's obviously the firstborn army and then there's a load of my comp pieces as well so yeah so it was just an amalgamation of 
There's a lot of the more recent primary stuff you've done, like yeah. the GW previews and yeah. things like that as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's quite good. Yeah, it was cool. I liked that it was just an overview of everything. Mm. Yeah. Like there was, it spanned yeah. so many, like different, like a couple of different eras of releases. So that was really cool. And, yeah, got, and two different game systems, at least. Yeah. No, I, I really enjoyed getting it all out and, and obviously jamming to write up and up text and information about it and what it means to me and stuff. It was really just, again, really, really nice and super humbling to have the opportunity to do that um, and sort of like, I don't know, sort of like not solidify, but kind of like date mark, obviously, my love for the chapter and for those mm. miniatures, which I think was quite nice. So, so yeah. When do you reckon you'll have enough to fill a Warhammer community article on your Blood Angels, George? 3027. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. I, I thought like... you were going to say 30 years' time, but even then I was going to be like, are you sure? <laughs> I don't even know what the biggest army I've painted is. It might be. The Empress Children, Empress Children. Army. Empress Children. That's the, the biggest siege one painted for tabletop tactics. That's the biggest one that I've seen. You do, you yeah. The, um, the, There's probably some rivaled the orc sizes. The I've done a big. fairly sizable orc army. That was mostly vehicles. It was like a cult of speed thing. Yeah. Mm. yeah. In terms of like amount of painting and like hours, that was probably very very similar. Yeah. But the model count. Is Looking a lot at the model long. count on the yeah. table, yeah, yeah, probably the Empress Children, right? Yeah. yeah, probably. But then, like similar to you, if I actually went back through like my Lightroom catalog and added it all up, it's probably. I mean, I've done at least five or six armies of that size and mm. then mm. a scattering of, you know, smaller projects in, in mm. between. It's probably way more than I think it is in my yeah. head. Because you just sort of, especially like you said, like if they go in a case and then they go in the loft or something or go after clients in our case, then not that you forget about them, but they're not like super fresh in your mind. Yeah, you don't remember so, everything about them. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you completely. What was the process like for sort of writing up the article and all that Do you know stuff what? Then? I was well. I was given like a. I was like, it needs to be about X amount of number of words, and and really, what it was is in that limited amount of text, it was trying to summarize everything about not only the collection but also why I like models, and then my favorite points and that kind of stuff. So I think it's I, like going back to school. We had to do like a Blood Angels essay. Yeah, yeah, it was really, really. Yeah, it was. It wasn't as easy as I thought it was going to be because I think I thought it was going to be easier because I could just sit there and just talk about. Blood Angels forever, which I can do, but like, but talking about it and writing about it are two very, very different things. So yeah, I just tried to do like sections about like a little bit about painting, a little bit about characters, a little bit about the, the why, like the law, the backgrounds, you know, like a uh, bit, bit more about painting. So I kind of just tried to splash a little bit through all of it and it just kind of explained a little bit. Um, and also throwing a bit of childhood because I thought that was quite important as well. Just like yeah. how, you know, how I got into it and why, why them and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, but yeah, ma massive thank you again to Wyman Community for letting me do that article. That's Really, really super, super, super humbling, and like a little tick box on the old bucket list from when I was a child. So, which is which is good. Was you um, one thing I'm curious to is because it's like you know competition season, so to speak, with Demon going on. We've announced Iron Skull for next year, obviously. What was looking at your past competition entries again like? So they are the only things that I actually look at frequently oh, okay. out of my collection. Um, they the were probably out on the shelf already, right? Or something. Are they, home, are they yeah, displayed at home, home Yeah, they're displayed yeah. at home. And like, I think that they, they are the things that I always look at to look at how, if I've improved or if I've done, how I, even in some cases, because I jump between different things, uh, projects, obviously painting armies and doing armies and bits and bobs and then going back to doing a bit of comp painting and all that kind of stuff. Like, I have them out quite a bit just so that I've got reference uh, really to sort of like what I've done previously and even down to, like, to, to certain things like before I kept a journal like color choices and all that kind of stuff. So, so yeah, so they're the things I keep out. But yeah, I look at them enough to know that obviously the first one is not as, is, is worse than the right. next one and the next one and the next one, so to speak. Yeah. So yeah. Do you keep older models around, Joe? Yeah, actually funny enough, like obviously I haven't painted armies and stuff like you guys, but I can still echo the the sentiments what you're saying because when i was moving recently I, I, it actually caused me to go through a lot of like boxes and stuff and i found like fully painted models that i just completely forgot that i'd actually painted i think in my head i'd only ever finished like three models or something and i was like oh that i've actually done like More. there's quite a few here mm. like um i don't really have any like on display or anything at the minute i'm kind of wanting Bit of a fresh start, I guess. Other than like uh, um, any other underworld stuff that You've I've been more more recently using, um, but other than that, no, I don't really have anything on display. Obviously, this will change when I win the you know, <laughs> army race. Uh, um, Never know. Iron Skull next year could win Staff Cat. That, that I mean, that would be 
hysterical. <laughs> you got a year. You got, no, um, yeah, you got nine months, eight months. I think if I if I started now, now if I started a, no, no, a basic right, intercessor now, right now, like if we stopped recording, and I went home and did it. <laughs> um, I. I still don't, I don't think I would get anywhere near and I could spend the entire time painting a single model. Um, you should enter for the for the fun of it though. I think you should. Yeah, that we should said be, this last that time. Should, and, that, that's perfect for the podcast. You should, you should, we should all document it. I mean, right. no, we can't. Oh no, we it's can't. Be secret. Oh, it's got to be secret. We could talk about it after the fact though. The staff can. Yeah, after yeah. the fact we can, yeah. yeah. So yeah. For, for the listeners, if you don't know, there's a staff category for Iron Skull in 2025 and we've sort there's sort of a, an a gentleman's role. agreement <laughs> yeah. amongst the the staff that we're not going to talk about our entries with each other until the day. So it, it's going to be like the the big yeah, reveal. It makes it such is, a good reveal. It is such a good reveal. It, it is a good reveal. And but the thing is, like for the office staff, obviously we're we're shortchanged a little bit. I'll be honest, we're shortchanged because we have to. If we want to enter, we have to enter the staff cat. which is just full of professional painters. <laughs> it's no like, excuses, Joe. It's like on. what. The, what, what, you know, I don't, I don't deserve that. <laughs> I should be able to let me enter the junior. <laughs> let me enter the junior one. How is that fair? <laughs> yeah, you can't. Um, you can't do that. No. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, staff cat is staff cat. And, It'd be and worth like, entering, though. I think you'd like the fun of no, having we, that we as did like a say, deadline like, and I, a goal. I do regret not entering the first year that we did it. Yeah. And, uh, and, it, and it, obviously, I wouldn't have got anywhere near a. a winning anything or whatever but we said it's not um, about that though isn't it yeah no exactly and but i think i hadn't really i hadn't been at the company that long i hadn't really been in the environment of competition painting that long so i wasn't really fully understanding of that mm. i was more oh i'm going to be so embarrassed to show my model off right do you know what i mean and being honest at the time i would maybe still feel this way a little bit now but at the time i was a little bit concerned <laughs> Because I was the only office staff member at that time. At yeah. that time, yeah, that would be were. entering. So I was the only non-professional painter that would be entering. And what I didn't want was that there was less of an understanding of Siege as a company and its size. So maybe less of an understanding that yeah, there's office staff as well. And what I didn't want was people to look into the staff cat and see my thing and be like what that that's that's one of their painters like they're charging you know they're not the cheapest in the world and that's what you get in for a competition entry I get that, yeah. so i, I was a little bit concerned about that because there was no other i was the only one i was the only person you in the are, company yeah, you were. who would be entering we had lou but she wouldn't she, she wasn't going to be there model, yeah. um so i was the only one who would have been entering that wasn't also a professional painter so and we were talking four years ago like so yeah. my, i'd you know i hadn't been painting again that long and it wasn't so no Definitely excuse, wasn't so at, no, no excuses for twenty five then. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't at a point where uh, <laughs> I'd be happy for it to blend in amongst the crowd. I think at the very least, but um, so yeah, that was a little bit of a concern then. But I do, uh, yeah, I do. I did almost instantly regret not entering. I think you should because um, that moment, like when we, because the, the whole thing with it, was, as you mentioned, Joe, is like once we set up, there's a bit, a little bit of time whereby we can. We've got it was the work. night before on that one. I think we spoke about it before. It was so funny. Yeah. It was so funny because everyone had been playing it cool while we were setting up. Yeah. When really all anyone wanted to do was find out what everyone else had done <laughs> and, and inspect it. Yeah. And everyone was trying to be all coy about it. And obviously. there was a bit where like we just sort of finished setting up and I like walked out to go and put something away and then came back. And within that like couple of minutes, I came back, everyone was just crowded around the same table and I'm boxing their like entries and looking at everyone else's entries and it, stuff. It was really good. Um, it was a bit of a like Wild West category as well, because we didn't really put that many rules in place for the start of cat last time. So you had people doing like, it was like basically an open cat. Wasn't basically it? It was like, like an open cat. It was yeah. like single miniature, huge model diorama. Like it was like, yeah, it was this crazy. this year we've tightened the bolts a little bit, so, yeah. so single single figure, but um, but yeah, like as in like a character or something. Like, yeah, which I think would be quite good. Can't wait for people to try to bend the rules. You know, it's gonna happen. Yeah, yeah, it's not gonna happen. Please don't. <laughs> if any of the team are listening, please don't. <laughs> please don't. No, it's hard enough to run the event. Well, anyway. if it's anything, anything like our patrons in the uh, in the, the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, rule bends are not allowed. Yeah, staff cat. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, it's uh, yeah, it'll be fun. It'll be really, really good. Um, I'm looking forward to it. We frequently hear from you with questions asking how you can paint like our team of world-class and award-winning artists. Teaching is something that all of the team here at Siege are very passionate about 
and we want to share with you the methods and techniques that we use to paint every single day all of the incredible miniatures and armies that you have seen from us. With the Seed Studios Patreon, you'll gain access to a growing catalogue of over 300 step-by-step -step tutorials covering a huge variety of colour schemes, miniatures, painting styles and techniques from beginner-focused foundation tutorials to full character masterclasses. Each lesson comes in a beautifully designed and easy-to-follow PDF format with accompanying artist commentary with new tutorials added every single week. Your subscription also includes access to our private patron channels on Discord so that you can interact directly with our artists asking for questions or feedback. You'll also be supporting the podcast directly, helping us to bring you these episodes every single week. So if you want to take your painting to the next level and make the most of your very valuable hobby time, head over to patreon.com forward slash siege studios okay main topic of course last weekend was spiel essen which is one of the biggest board games slash war gaming conventions in all of europe uh also was the location for golden demon this year james you was our man on the ground so to speak yeah i didn't take the uh the the, the fluffy microphone with me unfortunately but, um, <laughs> we should have done like um we should have like called in and done like a weather report that would have been good yeah i think um it would just be me in the middle of a massive crowd that you can't to hear me. Yeah, we could have, we should have tried to do some kind of live stream of like James trying to do it on his phone. Could we have done it with the really awkward delay and pause in between as well? Yeah. Like, James, okay. how's it looking out there, James? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been a really great show. Today. <laughs> I do have uh, quite a few shout outs today, uh, purely because I was mobbed by people uh, throughout the course of the four days saying various things about Siege, Iron Skull, and obviously the podcast. So without further ado, oh, he's got a list. I've got a list, yeah. Because I, I think we just cut to like the names scrolling like really fast, like, <laughs> like, uh, like credits. <laughs> so, so shout out to mm -hmm. <laughs> right, and moving on. No, yeah. um, so there was Martin, there was Rob, there was Sven, there was Kevin, there was Rene, there was Jens, there was Erica, and there was Bart. And uh, you all were very, very kind to come over and speak to me about various different things. Um, and I just want to say a big thank you for doing so because it was really nice to chat to you about miniatures, chat to you about obviously what you're at the convention for. Most of the conversations were about Golden Demon, obviously, and just miniature painting, which was great. Um, but it was really nice to know that like a lot of you listen to the podcast while you're painting and that you enjoy the content that we do. So yeah, I just want to say a big thank you for coming over and saying hi. Uh, and I hope you had a great, great convention and great Golden Demon. Nice. Um, we'll get to Golden Demon in a bit. Do you want to give us like an overview of the actual event? Because I've never been personally... It, so, it was, I knew you didn't come back because I got lost. <laughs> like, so, so there was, how comparable is it to, for example, in the UK, we have UK Games Expo. There's obviously like Adepticon in the States and whatnot. How so would it UK compare GE to those? UKGE bigger than Adepticon, um, but it was like UKGE times four. Um, oh, really? Yeah, it, okay. it, there was like seven or eight halls. And I'm, not, I'm kidding you not, like there's a Galleria part, which is like where all the food vendors were. It was like, it must have been at least three, four hundred meters long, like with like glass ceiling like it was crazy like it was absolutely massive um uh, yeah like here's where the germans in the comments are like actually it's 307.2 yeah, meters yeah. <laughs> i mean you can I fact say, i love that the the thing he's mentioned most <laughs> so far like the the shining thing he wanted to mention was the food hall it was I good say, you know that's how you know it's a good convention it was good it was a, it was massive would absolutely. that be on would that be on your because i thought that ukge food hall pretty like pretty underwhelming yeah pretty poor yeah yeah, yeah. so whereas if you you know you gave me a, yeah I had right. some you you done me dirty because you overhyped some carrot cake. Uh, no, that, oh, that, no, that was good. No. I'm a sucker though for that. Like, if, it's, <laughs> if it's like if it's like it, rubbish, carrot cake is still is that, is that a the top determining tier. factor of whether a convention's good or not. Is, is if it has how's the carrot? Cake? How's the yeah, carrot, cake? carrot cake? Yeah. yeah. Joe yeah. had this carrot cake and he was eating it in front of me. He was like, "This is like one of the most amazing carrot cakes I've ever had." In my no, life. I didn't. Say, and I'm I didn't like, go that "Oh, far. I must have this carrot cake." No, no, and then you built, you picked it up so much. I didn't go that far. I didn't go that far. You putting words in my mouth again. I said, "Yeah, it's good." I said, it's good carrot cake. Well, for a convention. I don't know how. how in Birmingham, it's a good <laughs> carrot cake. I love that Birmingham is the factor there. Well, like, Birmingham carrot cake, easily worse than. Uh, well, it's not known for well, its carrot cake. If that's anything, if the, if the carrot cake barometer. What was, it, is what was a carrot cake like? There, there was, was no carrot cake. <laughs> <in the market. laughs> I'm not going. <laughs> can no, you eat but, carrot cake, vegan? Uh, I think there are versions that I can eat. Yeah. It's carrot yeah, it's The fine. cake might have butter in it. But, you know, they anyway. Love, they love carrots. <laughs> anyway. Uh, it was absolutely massive. So it had, like I said, it had seven or eight halls and um, I was very conveniently, I managed to get a hotel. Like I, the whole hotel thing was crazy, by the way. So like hotels just for staying there, they they like, Golden Demon was obviously announced later than when Spill was announced. And I, I really struggled to find a hotel and it was only by chance that I went on to booking.com at a certain time and found a hotel literally opposite the venue, um, which was quite good. 
But um, because of that, it meant I could get in quite, get up quite early, get there without any crazy traveling or anything. But the, the, the size of the space was just mental. Just the hall to queue up to get into the, the convention was like an aerodrome. It was like it was like massive, like a hangar at an aerodrome. It was just absolutely crazy. Um, Do you know like the capacity? I have no idea of the capacity, but like it, you can fact check me and find out. But like, it must have been easily over 40,000 people easy across like, not only across the event, but also... What was UKGE? Did we, we got some numbers on that eventually. I can't remember. If it wasn't top, as top big as... It was big as Spill, but like all I know is the attendance was like crazy. Yeah. There were points where like... I mean, the corridor width that uh, UKG is around about three metres. The corridor width that Essen is like five, to give you a bit of an idea, just for like for traffic and foot flow. Mm. Um, the, it was absolutely mental. And, and the good thing is, is like if you're into board games and you like board games... Essen is like the place to be because there I, I'm not I've never seen so many board games in all my life. Like I, I genuinely and there wasn't there was just there was like resellers, there were people who had like collections of board games, there were individual companies which were producing board games. That I'm uh, the other thing I was gonna say, I've I realized there's a new sport uh, um a new sport at like a uh, new board sport. Game, at board gaming conventions, yeah. So what it is is the moment the shutter opens, yeah, there is a race, Jay. All right. What do you mean? So every day, different companies demo their games. Yeah? yeah. So what happens is people look in advance to see what company is demoing what game. And it's almost like the Olympics, like a running event. So when the shutter goes up, people are like, what's well, a sprint to their favorite game? Yeah. Yeah. You, I, I swear I saw someone in spikes. This is right? like, you get this at gigs where people want to get like to the front. Out to the front. Yeah. It's not, not a bit of me that. No, yeah. I can't be. I'm not running. Well, you wouldn't be like camping out the night before waiting for. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Like, but the, it almost reminds me when you used to work in retail and the Christmas sales were on. Like, I remember one year the shutters went up and there was a guy who literally limboed under the shutter as it was. Yeah, like, oh, you know, know those like, crazy yeah, videos like, from like 10 like, years ago you'd see in the States of um, Black Friday. Black Friday. People yeah. like mobbing a shopping mall. No one was yeah. fighting, just to confirm. If you go spill, no one's going to punch you in the face <laughs> yeah. before you get a ball game. But like. I had, it, I had to look it up, by the way. So it's 200,000 capacity at spill. Yeah. And UK Games Expo is 65,000. Yeah. So it's like three, three almost three times. four times the size. It's, it is mad and um yeah like i actually the, the first day like because obviously the main the main hall that i went in was like, i think hall one which was like where all the war game in board ga uh, war game in stuff was with like golden demon and gw and like various other companies um I, it, it took me like about an hour and an hour and a bit just to find hall one <laughs> like I'm not kidding you like, <laughs> I love that. like, like it literally took just me wandering around I was honestly he's got like Google Maps open but he's inside <laughs> yeah, the venue so, <laughs> yeah but the thing is is it, it, well, you laugh but it was nearly as bad as that I had for some reason when I landed in Germany I turned my phone off turned it back on I had the worst signal ever for like the first day Um. so I the, but the, the one good thing that I found out about the convention after the fact or near towards the end was that they they actually have like a, an app for the event that allows you to I love that, you found that. Oh, that has like a live view it doesn't it, it, on the map in the app it, no not a live view no it's not no. that it's not that good so I wish more it, wish people need to get onto this yeah. for event stuff I went to um, Colchester Zoo probably a couple of years ago now um, not really a fan of zoos in general but I got roped into it so I went there <laughs> um, but they have you open the app and it opens up like its own like native map of yeah. the zoo and it shows so where you are on it yeah. like you're on Google Maps. Yeah, didn't have that. Every convention should do I think that. A lot it of, probably um, costs so much money. I think but... a lot of um, like small festivals and stuff do that as well. Yeah. 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 Like I mean, it may, it may well have done, but my, my net was not working very well. Um, it, That's it, probably net, the main issue. Yeah, yeah, so you're dating yourself yeah, again. Yeah, there we go. The net. The, the internet. Okay. This, is, this is the board games. Uh, sorry, this is the computer games and video games thing all over again. On <laughs> well, the net, on the World Wide Web. On the World Wide Web. <laughs> on the Wi Fi. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's I, probably the main reason poop, that they, they don't do it, right? It's probably quite hard to. But everyone would, to get the signal to do it. I guess. Yeah, that's it was true. a very very good app from because I, I was in the queue waiting to go in on the first, on the second day. I spoke to uh, a, I can't remember the name of the chat, but I spoke to a guy in the queue, and um, he showed me the app and like you can search for board games. It plots you a route to the shop that's selling it. Like, oh, that's good. It's yeah, really it's, good. it's really yeah, it's really good. cool. Like, and um, but the good thing about it is it just allows you to navigate because I was like, surely there's like an event like magazine or something that has a map in it or that kind of stuff. There wasn't one, cause, and that probably because it's so big. You'd probably because like, I got the app. As well, well. you need like <laughs> yeah. an index or Argos catalog. I don't know if anyone remembers that. Old enough for that, but you need. The, 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 the he's coming with a. coming with the references. Yeah, the, the size of the the cat the, the the catalog or the, the size of the show show guide would be about as big as that. But um, 
suffice to say, I navigated the board game jungle and found Hall 1 eventually, uh, and then found various routes to get there, and then found that there was another exit of the venue that literally was from Hall 1. So then I never needed to go through the whole convention just to get to Hall 1 again. I can't wait for so, the comments from people who were there who tell us that there's like a 90-foot sign that says yeah, like, Hall oh, 1. Oh, no, no. It's so easy. There were, yeah. there were, above each door, as you go through from hall to hall, there was a giant thing, but it didn't didn't really show you where the it's too big a sign to zoom in and see all the different night entrances next suffice to say i found my i found my way around at the end um any but, like highlights from walking around sort of stuff that was there there's a lot there's, 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 one. there's a any lot of highlights from the journey wandering <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot more board games than i ever realized that there were um at, well, just full stop yeah full yeah, stop board game. Was, Who knew? There's a few of them. so many it was unbelievable I, I agree with that to be fair i get that because it's like you don't realize how many independent Board Small games there are, yeah, there's limits, so, yeah. so it, many now. It's especially, crazy. especially when in this day and age, like a one man company can mm. produce something like that, yeah, and events and stuff like that is their sort of bread and butter, really, and isn't things, it? Yeah, like, you, you don't, you don't realize we had it before where we jokingly on a single oh, episode yeah. <laughs> we jokingly mentioned what if there would be a Worms miniatures game and what and, Star Trek? and then like a Star Trek kill team type thing. Both of those things exist already. Star, like, Trek, yeah. Star Trek away team and then Worms the game, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. well, we said that on the podcast, like, oh, how fun would that be? No one would ever do that. And then everyone's yeah. like, not only is that a thing, but here it is. It's really we high quality. It. We, were, we were pitching them as games that we would want, yeah. I believe, yeah. by the yeah. way. And then it turns out, oh, they exist, by the way. Yeah. So I still haven't bought them. That's, so. a, that's an exact, <laughs> that's an exact uh, example of that. Yeah, there, there's loads. Yeah, but it was, it was absolutely eye-opening, just the... Um, just the level of of stuff that was there. It wasn't just, I mean, obviously this was known as a board game convention, but there was people selling swords, lightsabers, artwork. Um, I'm assuming it was like cosplay swords. It wasn't Yeah, like, oh yeah, there was definitely a few Jedi and Sith walking Yeah, around. but I mean yeah. like it wasn't like you could just go there and buy like legitimate Katana. Oh, you could yeah. buy a lightsaber. Yeah. No, you... no, swords. The real, the real world. I'm <laughs> yeah, not. To, yeah. why, is, why are you going to lightsaber every time I say it's, sword? The, you could, but you could buy legitimate swords as well. Yeah. Not. not I gave real... him like three opportunities to, to get yes, what Joe, I was saying. You, 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 you kept saying lightsaber because it's still a sword. But you, you can, you can buy legitimate swords and He's stuff. He's doubling down. That's literally yeah. him doubling down. Of course, double down. It's yeah. not a sword. It's a saber. Saber is a form of sword. But it's yeah. a lightsaber. Anyway. Yeah, there were sellers of, uh, that were selling all manner of different things uh, like like that, like swords and weaponry and all that kind of stuff. Obviously not real, but uh, but yeah. Um, That's all I was asking. Yeah. That's all I was asking. You got your answer. Originally. You got your answer. Um, Merchandise. You do get a lot of that though, don't you, at those conventions? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You like, do. It, it, especially like the historical stuff. And 100%. Like I, I would absolutely recommend uh, Spiel to anyone. I think like if there is, I'm quite confident in what I'm about to say next, which if you're into any form of ball gaming, war gaming, uh, even cosplay, any geekery kind of stuff, you can find it there. It it was crazy. Do you um, think that there's enough to do there for the weekend that it's worth traveling, especially for traveling like? Well, I got lost on the first day, so 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 yeah. But you know what I mean? Like sometimes yeah. with sometimes with those yeah. events because they're so physically enduring to walk mm. around a lot, especially and especially they're very very busy and whatnot. And obviously, at the end of the day, a lot of it is just shopping, really. Do you feel that if you was say elsewhere in Europe, it's worth traveling to still? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I do. There, there, there was a lot of really good things to do there on the day, um, and just like you, the, the time would pass by so quickly if you're going from uh, like from location to location, just just trying different games out or looking stuff. Even looking around Demon, like you could spend ages doing that as well. Like it was, it, it was absolutely crazy. Um, so I think did Games Workshop have like a whole? They had set a up there? whole booth. Yeah, yeah they had a whole, whole booth, obviously with Golden Demon on it. And the thing that I thought was really, really great was that you had Golden Demon in one like long, long sort of chunk. And then next to it, you had like your paint your first Warhammer model right next to it. So it's almost like here's the starting point and mm. then here's like the apex of where you could reach. So it's a so someone could literally paint the first Space Marine or Stormcast or whatever model was in the box of paint of uh, undercoated models ready to go with uh, with little paints and stuff. Or I guess if someone was a passerby and they weren't too familiar with it, they could see the stuff in the cabinets and then it's like, oh, how can I have a go at it? Yeah, vice versa. Right there. Yeah, it was, yeah. it was honestly really, really great idea to have those two things next to each other just so then that way you can, you, you can see both ends of the spectrum and, and get a good understanding of what's actually involved. Um, 
but yeah, it was, uh, it was really funny. I was by the cabinets and, uh, obviously the exact thing you just said, someone was walking by and I heard them say, Oh, I think all these models are for sale. I was like, they're definitely not for sale. <laughs> so, so like, <laughs> well, yeah, some of them yeah, might be, yeah, maybe afterwards. Yeah. Equally, yeah. there's probably some of them there. Like you couldn't give them enough money to, yeah, to yeah. take off my hands. Yeah, yeah. There, there was there was some really, really like really sort of like great sort of conversations that, were, that I was overhearing of people when I was at the cabinets about sort of like the, just they were like in awe of they'd never seen anything like it as well, which was which was amazing. Um, Do you think that's probably a benefit of hosting it at other events rather than hosting your own event? I think for, for I, the I think so. side of it. Yeah, I think so because it means that you can like drop ship the what what that is in various different places and, and so if you're saying it's mostly a board gaming convention then there's going to be a lot of people there who don't even know what warhammer is or care what warhammer is no but they've never familiar. seen a model painted to that level before no no exactly but they'll be familiar with miniatures from the board games and stuff yeah, and yeah. there's a nice yeah, one like parity between them so so um but yeah no it was it was honestly like really it, i was blown away with the convention I, I i i genuinely have no reason to to to, to not go back as in like i'll go every year i think it's it's that good you know nice. um so so yeah do you want to walk us through your entries uh maybe like one by one and yeah how they did uh first one was uh my Lamartis model so i've done a bit more work on him just done a couple of other bits and bobs that i wanted to, to sort of finish on the model because i didn't really get a chance to do it just before obviously we i painted it obviously for the preview day when he came out um and uh there was a few little things that were niggling me um so i'd redone those or i had done those bits and refined a couple of bits and just checked a few things that i wasn't happy with and then yeah submitted that in single fig which again as per our last last week's episode like single figures are a very hard category number one because of the sheer volume of entries because it's it, it's a category that has minimal investment as in it's just one miniature but the sheer every scale of like of of, of not only quality but also just numbers of entries as i mentioned just makes it obviously the really hard to, to 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 get past each stage of the of the competition if that makes specifically sense. specifically single fig 40k right is is even more populated i, I guess. don't know if it's so, is it still that way because it feels like i haven't been to the last couple of golden demon events but just from looking at the entries and stuff online it's looking like the scales are tipping the other way with aos single fig 40k is still very popular uh, age of sigma or fantasy is absolutely hard like it's a yeah, no, hard I, I know it's hard i'm just saying amount of entries i still feel like single fig 40k is probably the most popular one you probably get them more as there's probably and again I, I can't quote factual numbers here but you'll probably probably have more entries in 40k single fig but but age of sigma the the scale creep of quality is probably higher i would say mm. do you think that the quantity of entries is getting more close between those two between 40k and aos I, I, for me looking around the cabinet i i think you got more in 40k but yeah more so still 40, noticeably still, more in 40k still, still, still noticing more in 40k i think but i think what you what you get in fantasy that as i said the caliber is is tougher um yeah but then the top end of 40k thing is still extremely tough yeah so so yeah um but yeah, so I entered him, um, and then I literally, because I, I haven't entered vehicle before, I, I grabbed my my um, one of my con my contemptor from my Heresy uh, Angels Army just because I really love that model. Um, I had no ex no sort of like I, I haven't put anywhere near in anywhere near what I put into the Navartis into it, and um, and I just wanted to enter vehicle because I've never done it before. So uh, so yeah, so I entered that, um, and I was really really like blown away by getting like a uh, notable because they've got a new award which is like a notable entry card, so it's uh, it's it's less than fine list. But it's it's been sort of picked out because it's of a X standard or whatever. So it's like as if to say you almost made finalists. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, a nod. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a really nice, it's a nice, lovely, lovely card as well. Um, and um, so that that was really sort of surprising when I came back down on Sunday morning. I thought that was great. Um, but yeah, single fig was the thing that I kind of had something that I tried a lot harder on and painted a lot more. And again, like I said on that other previous episode, I had zero expectations over that. that I, trying to get uh, trying to get anywhere in in, in single is it, it, it is 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 really hard just because of the caliber of entries that they go in there so for me the aim was just to just to make first cut um which i i'm really really glad that i did like for me a, a finalist pin in this situation with the category being as tough as it was with the volume of entries that it was it, a finalist pin really does mean a lot and that's something that i wanted to tack on to the conversation last from last week like depending on the level of entries and the number of entries, like the value of a finance pin goes up and down, obviously, if that makes sense. So getting a pin when the 
the category is flooded with entries and the quality is also s sort of super high, PIN is like an amazing achievement. So I'm, I'm like super, super over the moon with getting, getting finalists in that category. Um, I've always kind of thought of it as well as like, um, cause there's only three or three trophies. And if you're talking about like hundreds of entries and there's only three actual trophies to give out, you can probably make a case for like, there's probably like 20 entries that all have valid arguments to be awarded one of those trophies. But then it just comes down to the individuals who are judging and what their preferences lean towards, even, even subconsciously yeah, and things like that. So I think that's what I've always taken away from the don't go in expecting a trophy thing. Exactly. Because there yeah. is even a certain amount of like, even if it is good enough for a trophy, you might not get it for things out of your control kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Whereas like the finalist uh, is like a nice thing to, it's like almost just as knowing that you're in that, you're, you're in that area of contention. Yeah. Like yeah. you're, you're among just knowing you were among the ones that are like considered. Yeah. You've also cool, got, you also got commended, which is obviously in between trophy and, and finalist. Yeah. And, and th those ones that you're talking about, that, mm. that's essentially what, what commended is, but you, you, a commended still needs to be, get a finalist. So, so mm. I think, I think that's one of the real good things, but yeah, like the, the competition was nails hard. And I think the, the reason for that is we obviously had COVID. So we have everyone painting like absolute maniacs during that time frame to keep, to keep, keep sanity. And then at the same time as well, we haven't actually had a mainland European golden demon since 2018, um, which was, was in Dusseldorf. I went to that one. Um, and that was, that was very competitive, that one, which was good. Um, but yes, yeah, so you've had like six years of like no, golden demon in germany so mm. to have one and then it was crazy uh like there were entrants from all over the world people traveled from all over just to enter it so really really super tough category um for like all the categories were super tough and um and and yeah like you know the, the caliber of entries was just you, you could spend a whole day walking around looking at them all like, scrutinizing every single one that's in there there were that many um, and not get bored, being honest. Yeah. So, so, yeah. Should we go through some of the winners then? Like ones yeah. that we uh, found notable, so mm -hmm. to speak? Yeah, let's do it. Um, James initially, like, off the bat, obviously you was there to see the, the models reporting, in the cabinet. Reporting live on the <laughs> ground. <Yeah. laughs> what was your, not necessarily the best, but what was your like favourite piece that you saw on the day? Very, very difficult because there were so, so, so many. Um, in a specific category or just in general? Just in general, I'd say. Normally there's a few that stand out, aren't there? Like yeah. maybe some that you've taken pictures of or something. Yeah. So for me, like the obvious one is, uh, is Albert, uh, Morente Fonts, um, orc. Like the photos just do not do it justice. Um, he's posted some of his own photos on, um, Instagram. I saw which look, yeah, I presume a bit more true to life, but the, the, the honestly, like, that I hadn't, I didn't realize how much work had actually gone into the model before we talk, even talk about the crazy paint job that's on it. Like, I think when I was there, I'd seen it in the flesh and I was like, it was like absolutely mega. Um, the, he then posted on his socials, a picture of all the conversion and sculpting that had been done on it. Like everything, like just to give you an idea, like the squig at the front is an upside down ogre chin <laughs> that's had sculpting done on it. Is it really? Yeah. Yeah. Like, and I just assumed it was no. Um, it's completely. It's it's an upside down ogre or like uh, one of those big, big, huge giant chins that's been sculpted. One of those chins. Yeah, it's absolutely mental. Like I, I just that's like, wild. The, the I work, didn't know that at all. That Albert has put into it just to get it to 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 look as it does before you even talk about the paint job is just mental. I think that speaks to the quality of a lot of these entries. Is yeah, because unless you see that, because they look so good and so flawless yeah your brain doesn't even interpret that it's been converted that it's been sculpted that it's come from something else because it just looks right you, it just well, looks like something you would go and buy yeah. like a really that part for me that i didn't again initially looking at it so that the the totem on the left is you know the war chanter the, uh, the auric war chanter that's holding the two things yep. mm -hmm. it's both of those joined together <laughs> right and like the, and the level of like the, forget, it, forget the level of sculpting ability required to pull this off like the technical ability but the level of creativity to just have this like encyclopedia of model kits and stuff yeah, in your just head. Go, oh, I can do that. Just go, oh, obviously I'll just take that chin, turn it into a squig. <laughs> yeah. like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Who looks at who looks at something like that and goes, that'll make a perfect oh. squig someday. I'll put yeah. that in the bits box. Like yeah. who that, was it that I might be getting confused? Who was it that got the did the Slayer Sword at Fest last year? That was Albert. Was that Albert yeah. with the Lumineff thing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. So he's he's won gold in single for the last three years. In iOS Yeah, because he'd done a goblin. There was this really cool gob- little goblin model. Then it was the uh, Lumin F. Mm. And then it was this this guy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like it just, it like, I think I saw the photos of it either at the airport flying out or when I landed. Or I can't remember exactly when, but yeah, um, it, it was just nuts. And then then Dave Perriman's... Um, uh, they were all the, uh, for some reason all the Age of Sigma ones for me were the ones like that was the other that was obviously Dave. I do but- I do think Age of Sigma and specifically for one reason or another I don't know if it's just because competition painters tend to enjoy them and do them so they more of them are painted to a higher level but like specifically like yeah those like Trogoth type or Auric type things like Fan- yeah those kind of fantasy orc type things just seem to lend themselves so well to competition painting maybe the, the models themselves just before you talk about the paint job the models are just so extravagant with details and like like little things you can add interest to with, i think having so many different like surface textures and stuff as well mm. is just such a fantastic canvas for demonstrating ability, ability and yeah. technique yeah. i wonder if it's more like i'm not trying to say like oh it's like i i, I almost wonder if it becomes like a bit of a thing uh like a, a standard that's being set or like a trend that's being set where like so many of these high level competition winning guys are are, are painting them um that it becomes like a benchmark to to reach to try and paint one of them like to a really high level no 100 um, percent. but yeah D- dave dave's um uh slash sword winning piece was just just nuts as well like again saw photos of it and then you see it in the flesh and just the quality and smoothness and refinement of it was just insane there's kind of nowhere to hide with a model like that as well because it's quite large yeah, I yeah, find that a, like a, a really really tiny miniature. Grant, photos can be a little bit different, obviously, but like in terms of just in hand, especially in a cabinet, I feel like there's kind of it's easier to hide things on something smaller. Whereas with a massive like monster on a big resin display base and stuff, because the because it's physically larger, there's and you can see it closer and in more detail. There's kind mm. of like more room for mistakes, if that makes sense. Mm. So to paint something so large so flawlessly. For example, if you went like to a complete extreme, say like a warlord titan or something massive, the freehand would be so big that if it was just like, you know, a tenth of a millimeter off, yeah. like it would be obvious. Yeah. Whereas if you took an epic scale warlord titan or something like that, it's physically smaller. So it's, yeah. and you've got lighting behaving with it differently like as well. Mistakes are less noticeable. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean that that as I said, like they, those two specifically, but the, the other one that I really absolutely loved um was was Tarot Ship. I don't know if you saw that one or not, but um so it's there's small scale. Yeah, yeah, so there's a bit of a, a bit of a story. So James uh, I know James really well and and he told me a bit about the story, but like he done one of his first demons, uh or one of his first golden demons he entered, it was was one of these ships many, many moons ago, like in the early uh, early nineties, late nineties. What, what are they from? Um it used to call a game called Dreadfleet. Um, so it used to be uh, this big game called Dreadfleet. It's a, like, War, a Warhammer game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and uh, he'd done another ship after that many years later. And then this is the third iteration of his ship painting competition. Um, and like just the white, like the, the water, I asked him about the water, he'd done the water and stuff, like all the waves and like the amount of work that went into that, the, the, the level of freehand on all the sails are freehanded. The, the rigging as well, he made all the rigging. So like these ships don't come with rigging on like the game model. So he's made all the rigging with like rod and like it, he's telling me about bending the rod and like molding the rod to look like it's got tension or slack. Like it just, it, it like as a piece, it's just absolutely nuts. So like, and seeing it in the flesh, again, I got there on the Friday and some people have been there on the Thursday. So some of the models have already been entered and people have posted their photos online once they've entered them, et cetera. Mm. So like seeing them on the photo and then getting to see them in the cabinet was the, the, it was just amazing to see the different like see the, the sort of like you you like it in the photo and you're like holy cow it's amazing you sit in the flesh and you're like wow that's even better than I thought it was going to be like you know from the photo, um, but yeah there were some amazing entries and obviously every category has its own nuance of like of, of entries like obviously small scale epic scale small scale had some really fun entries this year I really liked um, Gregor Pulaski's drop pod drop pod yeah that was cool which uh, Joe I wonder how that ranks for you I know that you you see pilots and stuff you're like oh he's like the little guy in his little chair you think it's too yeah. cute see for warhammer yeah where do you yeah. land on epic scale stuff oh what epics no no, no that's fine epic scale okay, is like, I, oh, I feel like this cute. is like oh it's a little dreadnought it's a little if it's a pods. little epic scale one who's then a pilot in a tiny little ship then yeah maybe we've got some problems right but, <laughs> um, 
Uh, no, epic scale in general, I don't think it's inherently like, oh, it's all tiny and cute. I've never I've fun. never painted epic scale and I got really, really excited when the Legions Imperialis stuff dropped. Mm -hmm. And it's been on my list to to do. Hopefully for next year, maybe I can do something. I, 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 think, I, think, I think small scale has really been opened up now with that release, if that, that makes push, sense. Because yeah. it felt like for the last few years, small scale has basically been Titans and occasionally some of the Aeronautica stuff. It's funny you say that though, because I would even say the release of the Titanica stuff was a door opening for yeah, that epic fair. scale yeah. stuff as well. Like that was felt like, because to me it felt like um, any epic scale stuff at that point, I was like, oh, that's old models. Yeah. yeah. There's nothing but current I, in that scale. And then... But this feels the, like it's uh, finalized it though, because now you've got like infantry and vehicles yeah, yeah, and it's got war everything machines yeah. and... The, yeah. We've got, yeah, the flyers Aeronaut, as well Aeronaut so you kind of got stuff. like everything yeah, from yeah. The game. i would love to, i'm still yet to see i'd love to see like a really really cool diorama utilizing like i do think on the, the flip system. side to what you were saying about the larger models and how mistakes are so uh, much more visible on larger models and stuff like that i do think there's something to say with the epic scout like the prospect of painting epic scale stuff at competition quality is absolutely bonkers to me like the 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 level of How refinement. How perfect yeah, everything has to be. Yeah. yeah. Um, is insane. Some of the, like, they're, like, they're, especially like you were saying with Tarot's one had like freehand on it and stuff yeah. like that. Like the I struggle enough with chucking on my, you know, magnifying, magnifying spectacles and yeah. painting some freehand on the Space Marine shoulder because I can barely see it. Yeah. So the like, idea of doing, you know, some freehand chapter symbols on a little Leviathan that's the side of my thumbnail is absolutely out of the question. There were some crazy little entries. Like there were, in, there's an individual infantryman in, in, uh, in, uh, there's always one. Yeah. There's a Nurgling. There's always a Nurgling. <laughs> yeah. Someone yeah. there's a Nurgling in something in single big every <laughs> year. And there's a, a single well, smallest infantryman in, in epic scale. One, one of the really funny entries actually was the, uh, was in a unit for fantasy or Age of Sigma. It was a, like a pyramid of, uh, of, um, squigs piloted by one grot so it had like <laughs> it's really cool it's a really cool entry um but yeah like there was some absolutely mind-blowing the, um, the dioramas this year in particular i think were absolutely nuts yeah i do across think, the board like dioramas is one that like where does it stop yeah it's just getting like it's crazy isn't it like the amount of work going into certain ones have you seen any of these on on socials at all because i've seen some of the... i've only really seen the the warhammer official images to be oh, okay honest. right okay um, yeah. i saw um pavel's diorama on his instagram that's and it's that is particularly one of the ones i'm talking about yeah, yeah where it's like L when you see it unpainted and just like the mess <laughs> yeah <laughs> there's no better word for it yeah of just models and uh, mass. how can you even get your head around it to bring it into such a like coherent incredible thing that's Is someone it? who went i've got this pile of shame i need to just sort <laughs> it out <Yeah. laughs> what can i make from this maybe that yeah, yeah that, there's your hobby hack for this episode see this is where you go wrong you're seeing your pile of shame as a pile of individual miniatures you yeah. need to see it's actually it as a diorama yeah. Yeah. yeah uh your pile of potential is actually your next is actually your iron skull uh diorama entry yeah um yeah it's uh it, it's just like i can't even begin to like some of it even though i'm not at the level of these painters, I can comprehend what goes into painting a single miniature to a really high level. It's it that seems within my world. Yeah. That seems of this planet. But then there's certain things where it's like I can't even begin to comprehend like some of the thought processes of how to put together um a diorama like that and then continue to paint it to such a high level. It's, you just know as well that they're using techniques and products and stuff that you just have no idea yeah, exists. Yeah. Alien technology. It's yeah. the only answer. That's why that's, yeah, that's what I think. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like there there were some really, really impressive uh dioramas and things. I'm glad you're moving the screen as you are, because uh, we, we've got to go back. The young bloods category, like I mean, I remember... They're, they're starting to show us up now. Yeah, this annoys, like, me. this annoys me every year. <laughs> <laughs> right. the, the, the Young Bugs category is always interesting because like, I they're think... They've crossed the line now, I think, yeah, where too we, far. Need to, we need to like hold them back a bit, all right? <laughs> we need to push the, the age get the, the age down, yeah. I think. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is honestly really, really nice to see the, the sort of the entrance in Young Bugs because... That's it's like, always exciting, isn't it? Yeah, when you it see is. like who wins, or if you when you see the the award ceremony for the young bloods, and you're thinking, oh, this could be like 
a the future next, well, yeah, you yeah, say that yeah. but like a lot of the, the heavy hitters in the competition scene now who have won you know multiple golds or slayers or whatever weren't entering. you look at them on the you know the compendium or whatever and you can see oh back in 1996 in the young bloods category they got yeah. the first we're kind of seeing that now that's what i'm saying yeah, yeah. So yeah. like future tense these names will probably pop up again that's why it's exciting like when you see yeah the the, the awards ceremonies and stuff like that for it the next yeah. like miniature painting prodigy yeah could be it, right under it, our nose yeah, yeah. yeah. it is yeah. and and, and like, i think that category is, is had a, re- a load of really good entries i mean the winners were fantastic obviously for the for and i mean this in the, the with best way possible for the age and for the amount of years painting the quality that's in there is just it's just exceptional like it really George is George just zoomed in on one of them and turned around to me and shook his head yeah, <laughs> yeah, he like mystified at how good it is yeah. It. yeah um but yeah no they, they were really really good and um specifically on these three winners by the way like even just the comprehend like the understanding of like light placement and volumes and stuff yeah they're on plinths they've <laughs> savvied up do you know what I mean like I was <laughs> me I when I was, I don't know how old individually these these three uh, got to be winners under, are. Under 16. Under 16, yeah, but yeah. I don't know how old specifically they are. Yeah, but, that, that yeah. could be 15 or it could be nine. Yeah, yeah. at yeah. any given point under that age, I was slapping paint on my models <laughs> straight from the pot, just gooping it on. Um, with no even understanding that you could potentially actually just paint it nicely. Um, meanwhile, you've got... Uh, yeah, some of the kids doing some some great work. Yeah. I think I, was, that, I wasn't even painting at that age, like, yeah. let alone winning competitions. So. Yeah, I mean the, the other thing that's really demonstrable in this about how far the sort of like the progression has come, not only in painting but also in composition, is like uh, uh, Henry's the first the the, the winner, the, the the chap who got gold. Like he's obviously put it on the plinth as well, but just like just like the composition of it and the way they've done the base and like it, it just it's just, that wouldn't look out of place in the main category it's, at all it's not, not, re- would, really not I don't think slightest. any of these three not in the slightest yeah then, you wouldn't see any of those three in the cabinet in like the main comp and be like oh is that in the wrong oh cabinet? did a child enter this yeah. you wouldn't yeah. be thinking oh, that exactly. excuse yeah. me you've got one of the children's entries here yeah, yeah. Like, no absolutely not you wouldn't yeah, they were, they were phenomenal and I think that's one of the things that's a real good sign of like where painting and miniature painting is going and the competition scene is going is like the calibre that we're getting even at that entry point and I, uh, that's that's something that i really really sort of like like seeing at the competition which i think is great um but yeah overall it was just a absolutely fantastic uh event and uh the caliber of the entries as i said was just out of this world so it's so a really really well done to all the winners mm-hmm. um loads of there's i can you imagine like the amount of hours if you added up the amount of hours of, of effort and time that have been put into all those entries, like collect- all entries. collectively i know there was I think over- people discount as well the like planning time and yeah. the, like it's not like someone just goes uh i think i'll do truck yeah we'll get that we'll buy that from gw like it's not like a flipping decision like there's yeah. planning there's sketches of compositions like it's a multiple stage process there's a lot of paint like even hits for, the model for some of these like top guys there's a lot of like working out color schemes in photoshop like painting over the the yeah the model images yeah. and stuff like that like and you're not seeing the pieces that they probably spent 50 60 odd hours on and then got to a point where they went no nah, this isn't it chief and then yeah. binned it and started again yeah. do you know what i mean yeah so you don't see the i said this funny on the on one of the patron hobby hangouts is you don't see the failures of people's work you only see mm. the, the stuff that is like the result of those if yeah. that makes sense mm. yeah, yeah um because it can be two things golden demon can't it? it can be really really inspiring or really really disheartening depending <laughs> on like what lens you look at it through I, look i haven't entered it before but the I, I've what I have seen with with like the people that I've been with when we're there and seeing obviously friends enter and stuff like that is that even when it doesn't go the way that you wanted it to, I don't think I've ever just seen anyone be so disheartened that it was like a negative experience. Yeah. Normally, there's some positive element perhaps in the moment you're a little bit upset but then exactly, afterwards yeah. you go i learned a lot this piece was great here's yeah. what i'm going to do next don't time. get me wrong i imagine for some of the like top top guys who are like expecting themselves to be in the conversation or win or whatever i can imagine that they view it slightly differently that's fine for those you know the ones that have been doing it for 10 20 years and and all of this um they might view it slightly differently, especially the ones where it's a profession for them and things like that. But in general, I'm talking about, um, I think it's quite rare people come away and are, are feeling particularly like down on themselves about it. Normally yeah. there's enough else going on and it's been a nice 
social weekends. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Meeting everyone and chatting to people. So, um, yeah, I'm going to maybe enter Ryan's goal. <laughs> we'll, we'll get him there. Don't worry. Have you got a favorite character from a book or piece of artwork and thought to yourself, if only that had a miniature? Custom Service is our character creation brand here at Siege Studios. Custom Service is not just a kit bash. We create miniatures using traditional hand sculpting alongside conversion for entirely unique and bespoke miniatures that will blow you away. Our talented team of sculptors methodically and meticulously bring your thoughts into reality with the precise, refined and sharp work you'd expect from a digital sculpt and pair that with our world-class painting team for an incredible display piece you'll be proud to own. To bring your character to life and get a quote now, head to siegestudios.co.uk or head to the link in this episode's description. Okay, next up, we do some monthly painting challenges in the Siege Studios Discord, and the month of September was Tau Sept Ember. Yeah, can we just uh, explain this a little bit? Because people still don't get it. They still it. don't get it. People still telling us that it should be September and all this other stuff. The Tau Sept, the Tau, the Tau versions of like Space Marine chapters, for example, is a sept. Is a sept. Yeah, and one of them is actually called Tau Sept. So it's a bit confusing. It's like if a Space Marine chapter was called Space, Space Marine Marines. chapter. <laughs> <laughs> if it was called if it was Space Marine, if Ultramarines were called Space Marine chapter, that's, that's a more it, appropriate name for the Ultramarines. Can we all just say in solidarity? Yeah, the best name for Ultramarines would have been Space Marines chapter. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's a bit like that. But anyway, so Tau Sept. Yep. is a thing. Yep. Tau Sept Ember. Sept it's also Ember. It's also because we use the little the like, apostrophe. apostrophe thing. That's kind of ties in with it as well as a little nod. So it wasn't even us. I think a comment had come it's up with it. Yeah, and that was on. the one that I looked at and I was like, that is genius. There's layers to it. So <laughs> I will defend it. Fear not because 2025 we will be redoing this but yep. with a lot of submissions oh yeah we've had let, a few let other us good know ones. what your uh pun names for yeah. a given month would be uh because we're gonna yeah, start, start chucking them in the comments the only ones can... that we keep the same are the kind of generic october october, october and march from and march from Macrag. Macrag. they're kind of established yeah yeah it would have to be a genius name yeah. like the best possible name yeah um because they are the gold standard for like, us to like it. jew legion Let's not, let's, no, not, let's, not, some, let's not talk about Jim Legion. Some of that, um, look, it was our first year doing it. <laughs> Lessons we learned. We've all learned. We've all learned a lot, haven't we? Yeah. Okay. Well, once again, uh, we used to put every single one up and like speak about it individually. There's so many submissions now. It's mental. Uh, that being said, I would love to acknowledge every single person that did submit. So there's going to be a slideshow so yeah, when speak, we came up with this now. idea by the way we didn't have that many listeners yeah. <laughs> um now we're like x about the months in it's a bit harder to keep track of yeah. isn't it but, um so what we do is we'll we'll showcase everyone on screen now if you're watching on youtube and then we're just going to pick out a couple of our favorites but we do thank everyone for submitting uh we'll get to details of october in a minute uh joe what was your pick uh there was a crew tox that i spotted by crj mini i think was the username um, with the the pink background of the the picture, yep. very nice. Uh, it's Crute, so I'm drawn to it. I do love Crute, um, and I did wonder if people were gonna. How much overall are we talking like percentage wise? Was there a fair share of Crute? I would say Crute had much more representation than I was expecting. That's I would what say. I like to see. Um, yeah, it was a like good. It was a good chunk, not an insignificant uh, percentage of the submissions were were Crute based. Yeah. yeah, so that made me happy. This was painted really nice, and I do just I really enjoy that model. Can I, give a, can I give a shout out to the pink background as well? Because you don't often see uh, nice solid color backgrounds. Yeah, especially pink. Yeah. Mixing it up. I like yeah, it. Yeah. Complements the model nicely. Yeah. I like perfect. it. Perfect. Yeah. Let's normalize that, please. Bit yeah. of color in your life. Didn't hurt anyone, did it? Yeah, exactly. James? Get rid of the gray backgrounds. <laughs> <laughs> and white. Yeah. yeah. Darcy Farah. I'm going to join you on it, Joe. Is that crew as well? Crew Nation. Oh, yeah. Crew Supremacy. Yeah. I thought the crew that Darcy done were absolutely brilliant. I loved the super vibrant rich green uh, on them with the the uh, purple, the uh, orange quills. I thought they looked great. Um, also got a little base buddy there. Got a little doggo. Got a crew doggo on there as well on the base. I thought that was quite <laughs> good. Um, can't go anywhere wrong without uh, crew's best friend. So that was good. Yeah. If but someone can work one of the month painting challenges, someone can work out a name where the month could be for base buddies. Yeah. That'd be good. Nice. Someone can come up yeah, with one of like those. That. Yeah. But I don't be. know what, 
I'll let you all just have a little think. Yeah, we've got some time. Yeah, I'm some gonna time. I'm gonna give a, an honourable mention first before I get to my to my pick. Uh, it's to Bruh Moment who painted a uh, fantastic uh, stealth battle suit. Really love the camouflage on this one. Um, as you can see, it like blends seamlessly into the background. Yeah. So it's really effective. Yeah, I didn't um, see this one, or well, didn't not. see. This I saw one, the yeah. entry. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we love a rule bend, as you know. Yeah, so. yeah, and that's the best bend ever. So. That's I would technically say that's not even a rule bend. That is a towel suit. Maybe he understood suit. the assignment perfectly. Yeah, that is yeah. a towel stealth yeah. suit. Yeah. 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 As uh, far as uh, no one can tell him otherwise. Uh, I also want to give a, a nod to Hotshot M, who painted a very lovely, colourful. Is that a broadside battle suit? Yeah, broadside so, battle yeah. suit. Yeah. Um, really, really nice scheme. Some like sort of cool glowing stuff on the base as well. It's like a almost like a Alpha Legion kind of emeraldy green sort of colour. Yeah, mm. it's really nice. Very nice. Yeah, I haven't yeah. seen that scheme before. Very nicely painted. It's very atmospheric. So a massive thank you for everyone for submitting for the monthly challenge in September. Uh, this month is, of course, one of the community staples, I would say. Yeah, it's October. Yeah, we didn't have any say on this one. But yeah. it's a good one, isn't it? Yeah. So uh, it's hashtag October. If you'd like to submit to the monthly painting challenge it's in the Siege Studios Discord, which is linked in the description. If you're not a member of our Discord server, it's completely free. Uh, we do some cool, fun stuff in there. Get behind the scenes stuff, share your painted models, chat with us, all that good stuff. Uh, so if you post in the monthly channel there, it's uh, hashtag Orktober. You can paint anything Ork, Ork related. I think we'll accept like Orux and Orcs from uh, Middle Earth uh, and look, whatnot. Yeah. We just spoke about raw bends. A, a, a base <laughs> <laughs> that was submitted as a, as a stealth suit. If you want to do an Orc in Orktober, feel free. That's yeah. fine. That's fine. Raw bends are encouraged beyond the... Uh, Orox is like within the scope. Yeah, if you want to, it's not even a rule bend. If you want to find out a way to bend the rules, then we we encourage it. We encourage so, it yeah. Hashtag October. We look forward to seeing your uh, submissions. Seeing your submissions, of course. Uh, should we jump over to question of the week? Oh, I didn't do the intro. Right, okay. Question of the week time. Thank you everyone for submitting your questions for question of the week. If you have a question that you would like us to answer, and if you, you give me eyes, Joe. I don't know what you, 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 you we were like, yep. And then, you, and then you said, you said, he was loud. You yes. said, oh, I didn't do the intro, like at the point where you would be doing the intro. So you could just, you could have just started doing the intro. No one would have said I'm leaving anything. that in. I'm leaving that in. Bit of, <laughs> very I could see the nonsense that we get up to. <laughs> it's very odd. It was like, why are you correcting yourself? Just start the intro. It's fine. He was, he was loading. That was what was happening. Yeah. yeah that's what it was. That <laughs> was just a reboot. autopilot, Joe. It just, it just rolls. It's like a reboot. It's that like buffering. Question of the week time. Thank you, everyone, for submitting for question of the week. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. Go again. Question, <laughs> question of the week time. Thank you, everyone, for submitting for question of the week. If you, <laughs> Oh, come on. It can't be that funny. <laughs> Question of the week time. Thank you, everyone, for submitting your questions for question of the week. If you have a question that you'd like us to answer on a future episode of the podcast, please do leave it in the comments down below. This week, we have a question from Carl LM, who says, how do you know if you're ready for competition level painting? You never know. Throw caution to the wind. Paint something you really love. Paint it the best you can. Enter it and hope for the best. I don't think you can ever not be ready. I don't know why there's like a benchmark that people feel like they have to achieve because I think the the best thing about You're sitting at home like lifting brushes, <laughs> <laughs> sweat band on. Oh, like, like, you got the elastic band from your wet palette around your head. You know, like, you know, do, you know like what, do you know what I think the the barrier is and the thing of knowing? Oh, okay, I'm ready for it. What it is not the quality of your painting. That is not the thing that you need to make sure is ready to enter a competition because that I, I think. I'm talking like objectively from the outside here because obviously I haven't entered as we've said, but I think it's not the quality of your painting you should be worried about. It's can you, will you enjoy the event? Are you ready? Are you at a point where you would enjoy yeah, the event? And would you enjoy potentially some of the stress that it leads to? Yeah. Um, and, and are you able to cope with that at that moment? Would would it be a net benefit to your life if you had, if you went to this uh event and and entered and like we say are you okay with dealing with potentially not winning and things like that rather than it being like oh i can blend really well now i guess i'm ready for golden demon i think it's actually understanding the the event and are you personally ready to experience an event like that i think the same thing would translate to like gaming tournaments and stuff yeah yeah, yeah. we spoke before like last time at warhammer fest 
I like saw Boxy in the morning and he was all like chipper. And we were like, <laughs> yeah, you're right, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw him 10 hours later after, or whatever, like eight hours later after three or four games. And he was like shattered. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Um, it's like, are you ready for the actual experience yeah, the, the actual experience of the event and the yeah. social uh needs that it takes and things like that i agree with that i think you could extrapolate that as well and say i think there's potentially a lot of people at those events who are very very proficient painters who aren't necessarily in the healthiest mindset that you just spoke about mm. um and i think as well it's about like are you at a point in your painting where you're looking to improve and push your skills and you want to start have a piece as like a learning process for that yeah so i think that we've we said on the on last week's episode like about for us the best thing about composition painting is what you learn improving as a painter yeah um meeting other people getting inspiration from all that stuff so i don't think it's about the the trophies um mm. unfortunately for some people it is and it stops there but if you look at it in that way then i think anyone can be ready for it yeah. and it's like levels of competition as well because like golden demon obviously has a very very high standard but there are open competitions where you're just basically just judged on the merit of the quality of your work yep. rather than it just being a bronze silver or a gold winner um, and then you've also got like local competitions at your hobby shop and mm -hmm. things like that, um, which are a lot more, you know, localized. Um, I'd encourage you to enter as many as possible. Like the thing is, and the other thing I'd say is that like your expectations are only as high as you set them, which I think is something that you should really, really like understand and just take that into consideration. Like if you paint it and you go to the event and your expectation is, well, I painted this amazing thing. I want to, I'm going to, I expect to win, et cetera. Like the moment that doesn't happen or if something doesn't go exactly the way that you hope it does, you are setting yourself up for a downfall. So by just thinking, I've done the best I can, it's in the cabinet, I'm out, it's out of my control now. If I get something mega, if not, I've painted a great thing I'm really proud of. Job done. Like, I think that's something like you are completely all this stress and worry and if you're there and you're anxious because you've got this mindset of I want to win, you know, all this, like, you are the complete cause of that it's only you that's creating that for yourself um whereas if you just go with a bit more of a sort of like I, i've entered it i've done what i can and now it's in the competition's hands Does that yeah. makes sense you know i'm so obviously also i'm going off for the basis that if you're even asking this question you are probably at least at a point where you have like the fundamentals down yeah do you know what i mean like yeah i'm not saying you know slap some contrast on a thing and take it to a competition if you i mean you can if you want i suppose but yeah um i think if you're even thinking about this your painting is probably at a level where you're comfortable to exactly to put yourself in that position so it's the it's the other stuff really yeah yeah for me okay uh on that note i think we'll close it out there uh massive thank you for listening to this week's episode of paint perspective we're going to jump over now to the patron bonus post show of the podcast so if you want to get more podcast content from us check the link in the description of this video to our patreon uh, you'll get ad free extended episodes of the podcast in addition to hundreds of pdf and video tutorials which are updated every single week so check the link uh, for further details on that otherwise we will see you next week can we talk about the thing what what is this thing that i don't know that's an announce annou was it an announcement an or james, james had a bit of an epiphany uh <laughs> at gd yeah is it to do with the it's to do with our painting challenge, our army painting the challenge. The army painting challenge. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so it is. Yeah. So I'm, I'm right.